And now it's time for the latest exciting episode of Doz's Television Workshop. And welcome back to Dozzy's Television Workshop, where today uh, we're going to be taking a look at this broken Lynn Carrick CD player. Let's get on with it. Right, well this belongs to uh, a friend of a friend um, who complained it's gone completely dead, which is uh, quite common on these. Um, I am not going to demo it not working with very good reason. Uh, I want to inspect it first. So uh, first things first. There are four screws in the bottom of the case. Quite long things, really. Let's get ourselves a pot to store our screws in. Let's put the pot out of the way. And then uh, to extract it, we just slide the case off. There we go. And I've got a distinct smell already. So uh, the client uh, did mention he'd got a CD stuck in it. Now, this is fitted with a brilliant power supply and brilliant it was 20 years ago. Not quite so brilliant now. And this will be our problem. There was a definite sort of Difficult to describe. It's not sort of a fishy capacitor rot smell. It's a sort of chemical smell, but it is uh, capacitor related. So uh, we'll just unclip the power supply from the main board there. And then it unscrews from underneath these two countersunk screws there. We getting this on camera, yeah. You can just about see it on that camera there, can't you? One there again, quite a lengthy thing, and one there. There we go, and that will allow us to just remove the little power supply module. Gosh, it's tight in there. It's squished up against all its wiring on this one side, which isn't aiding and abetting us. There we are. OK, now we've got two connectors on this power supply. The input from the mains, which then darts off to the single pole switch and back again, is on the right here. So just remember that, that the ferrite bead is on that one there. Push the latch in, pull the switch, pull the plug up, and it should come straight out. There we go. And this one goes to oh yeah, the fuse, which is there. Snick that in, pull it straight up. There we go. Put your CD player down to one side. And let's investigate the brilliant power supply designed and manufactured by Lynn Products Limited, Clyde built in Scotland. Very nice too. Right, so these are those little plasticky rivety things. And they are smaller than the usual ones and they're a bit difficult to want to remove to be quite honest. I may need a spudging tool. Be too big, I think. Let's try the smaller, pointy one. Cool. Gonna be a struggle. I wonder if I can just persuade it out of the case. You can sort of see just down in there, the, the top of the rivet there. I wonder if I can get in that way and push it up. I 
It's stubborn, all right. There we go. We've managed to get that to uh, rear its ugly head. Pull that piece out. Oh, come on. Not really playing ball. Right, let's go in this way and see if I can't manhandle our way in over here. Right, okay. Is that going to gain me anything or is it just going to be a pain? Oh look, this one was assembled by Carol Malone. Hello Carol if you're watching. Oh dear. These are a major pain in my backside. Oh, I've managed to push that one up now. We might be in with some luck. Oh dear. Yeah, they've lost all their sort of elasticity they may have once had and they are not wanting to pop out right in that case then I should have done what I did at the should have done what I thought to do at the start and sniff them out of the way <sighs> hallelujah Right, here is the power supply. And you can see it's a rather nicely engineered thing, it must be said. Um, we've got lots of these little electrolytics in here. And uh, these are going to be our biggest problem. So, yeah. What we're going to do is we're just going to lift this board out of here. Inspect everything else. You will notice the, it is bereft of reefers. They have these Schaffner things that I've always found very good. Kev26 tested it. Passed in January 98. So first things to do is just make sure you haven't got any dry joints or things burning up. Looks good. I don't know when this was last switched on. It's probably been here eight weeks at the moment so there probably isn't anything zappy in these capacitors, but we will just go and have a look. Nope. No volts. No volts. And no volts. Excellent. Right, I need the ESR meter. We're going to have a quick whiz around these electrolytics. Generally, I've always found the mains, sort of those four I've just measured, to be very good. Um, we will just, however, have a little check. Yep, that's good. That one's good. That one's good. And I've got a feeling this one doesn't measure for some reason. No, he does. He's all good. Okay. So then we need to check this little lot down here, which is usually the, core, the cause of our grief. That one's okay. That one's okay. Ooh, okay. It's because I'm trying to measure an inductor like a Burke. OK, 
Okay, that one's getting leaky. That one's reading leaky. That one's reading leaky. And that one's reading leaky. And that is my sort of experience with these, that those are always not up to much. So let's take them out, test them individually and let's see where we are. The reason, by the way, I didn't power it on before doing this is because these big capacitors, they do stay charged up and it all gets a little bit zappy. Oh, and there's the smell. Ugh. Yep, and if you can see that, there's a lot of leakage around that capacitor and uh, they are marked on the board if memory serves yep the negative side is marked up now i am just going to change all of those and i'm even going to change these small ones uh, in the primary side of the switcher you can see our mains is coming in here this is all the primary side because our isolation is formed by this transformer and this optocouple here and uh, that is the safety capacitor, the RFI capacitor, um, that sort of couples the two, make sure we don't get any RFI issues. Um, it's a really nicely designed supply, actually. Well done, Lynn. Um, I am going to need to clear those holes out. Um, I've got a feeling these are all the same value. 100 mic, 35 volts. Yeah, so I'm just going to take them all out. By the way, I'm using a really big tip here because I can bridge both both sides of the capacitor at once and it will just fall out. Yep, that one's leaky. Oh, <laughs> it stinks. Oh, that one's in a lovely mess. Look at the crustification on that. Same with that one. Absolute, oh. Okay, it's going to zoom down here because we have a disaster. Uh, you can see here, if I move this lead out of the way, you can see there we've got a lot of corrosion and it's actually started to short circuit and burn up. That's bad news. That can do a lot of damage. Yep. I've had this before. That is a big problem. You can see I'm just cutting away here at the board with the end of this spudger and we're just removing burned up fiberglass PCB material. That is bad news. Right, I need to get the fiberglass pencil on there and uh, just scrape away at it and see what we've got left. That may not be too bad. See lumps of carbon coming out. That's where that electrolytic electrolyte has le leaked out of that capacitor and shorted out the trace. And we've got a trace lifted also. Okay we can mend that we need to just clean this up really well because any conductivity between the supply rails and ground is going to wreak havoc I'm going to need to remove some of these ferrite links I certainly think the third one down there 
just to uh, see if there's any further damage to the PCB underneath. So let's just do that. Yep, there's some damage there as well. Yep, let's carry on, remove the next one along as well. You can see where all this damage has been caused. Oh dear. So, that's my point, this trace here needs to connect back to that pin there, the third one that down. Uh, one, two, three, which has also got a trace over to another capacitor. I wonder where else it goes to. We need to just pin that out. It might be decidedly easier to add a wire link on the bottom of the PCB and not the top. So there we are. Okay, the other thing I now need to check, because, you know, some considerable current's been drawn out of here before it shut down, is these rectifier diodes here are still okay, so we'll just have a quick zap along those. Nothing is short circuit. Next trick is to find out where that trace goes. Uh, none of the above. We are on beep. So it looks to me like it comes between one of the pins on this choke. So is it that one there? Now that appeared to have a diode in the way. So if that's the case, here's the transformer. There's the rectifier. The rectifiers wiggle their way out through here. Is it that one there? It is not. I wonder whether it is just easier to strap it back together from this side. Let's just get some magnification in on the job and see if it's going to look all right. I think if we add a coin R wire in there, we're going to be good. There's still a lot of black in there. Black charred remains. Not nice. Well, it's particularly grim news. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit further. That'll do us. So, where's my pointing stick? The problem I've got, this pad has now become isolated from the top foil. I think that one might be okay. This trace here, I think came across here to that point there and then out of the power supply. But this one, I just don't know. It's only connected to a link on the outside, which surely means it should connect somewhere internally as well. Um, yeah, we're in real bother here. I can't second guess that. This one here looks like it's isolated from this ground plane there. So I don't think that's it. It's entirely possible that came over here and then off to this side. 
but I can't be sure. I can't guess this. It's got to be right. Um, so, yeah, what I need to do is either get another one of these that hasn't rotted away and replace the print, and then we might be all right. You see that trace? It could have gone up there. There could be something else missing. That one could go to there. I just don't know. And um, I'm trying to work it out with what's gone on on the back here. This is our capacitor here. As you can see, that one follows through from that one, but there's no supply from the top to it. I mean, surely there needs to be. Um, and this is the same. That one just goes out on that pin there. But is it a positive rail? Is it a negative rail? Which way around is the capacitor? I know which way around the capacitor is because they're all the same for machine assembly. But I don't know which way the wiring goes. Yeah, this, uh, this could be bad news. Um, there is, of course, another option. Um, these power supplies were originally designed um, to replace a conventional transformer and rectifiers in the main unit. And if I can find out what those voltages are, then we could either reverse engineer this or better still, fit a transformer and two rectifiers. I'll just show you the, the main board. Let me put that to one side. Uh, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit. Right, I'll pull that forward and just zoom in on the power supply area. That'll do us. So you can see here this is where the power supply plugs in. Um, we've just got a little bit of decoupling there. Three reservoir capacitors, but there's position here for two bridge rectifiers. So I'm fairly sure this originally would have been designed with a, a transformer in mind. And then that would have fed these pins here to give us the various voltages for that. I don't know. I've asked a friend of mine um, if he can uh, come up with some schematics or maybe even another Duff power supply um, that would get us uh, something comparable or, or even one we can repair to get this going. But at the moment, this is a bit of a non-starter. Damn it. Right, we shall see what happens in the next week or so. So a couple of weeks went by and I got nowhere and then I came up with this horrible lash up. As you can see here the CD players working a treat. And uh, if we wait till the camera pans round we can see that I've got uh, a plethora of crocodile clips. We're actually supplying power from a nasty homemade power supplier built up on a bit of breadboard. Um, clearly, that's not acceptable to the client, so I went off and I built my own. There you go. What I've done is I have uh, sort of reverted it, not quite how it was originally. As you can see, I've left those links in where the bridge rectifiers were, and we're just using a separate rectifier board. There is a buck converter on the other side, which is providing 10 volts um, for the microprocessor. So yeah, it's all working beautifully. There you go. All that we've got to do now is box it back up. And there you have it, the Lin Carrick compact disc player. Uh, now, without its not so brilliant, brilliant power supply and performing brilliantly uh, without it. Uh, there you go. Uh, click like, subscribe, do all that rubbish, and I'll see you soon here on Dozzy's Television Workshop. Cheers now. Bye.
it recording and for the benefit of you it's Tascam 131 there you have it the Lynn Carrick CD player uh, now without its brilliance power supply let's do that again because it's brilliant not brilliance There you have it, the Lynn Carrick CD player. Uh, now without it, it's brilliant, but performing brilliantly. It's been running here now for uh, a few hours. I've been chewing my way through the Duran Duran back catalogue. Very nice too. Uh, let's not mention that, it's stupid. One hit wonder. <laughs>